What is going on everyone? This is Jacob Amaral here. In today's video, we're gonna be putting the RSI indicator to the test. The relative strength index or RSI is a common indicator you may see on trading platforms and charting platforms like TradingView or Thinkorswim. Now we're gonna put this indicator to the test and we're gonna test it against a buy and hold strategy. We're gonna build a strategy that buys an asset when the RSI crosses above 30 and sells when the RSI crosses below 70, as most common RSI indicators or relative strength indicators are configured. We're gonna take that strategy and compare it to buy and hold, and we'll do a bunch of different assets. We'll do the S&P 500, we'll do Tesla stock, and we'll do Bitcoin. And we'll see what does better. Is buying and holding better, or is using an RSI indicator strategy better? Let's find out and get started. Okay, so let's check out how our results uh, played out here. So um, at the bottom left, you can see these tabs. I have RSI SPY, buy and hold SPY, RSI Tesla, buy and hold Tesla, RSI uh, Bitcoin, buy and hold Bitcoin. So um, I've ran six different back tests, um, one with the buy and hold and one with the RSI. So what you're seeing right now is um, the RSI strategy with SPY would have made $7,932.64, which is an 84% return on an investment. Um, this is, these are all with $10,000 starting capital. So if we go into the chart, we can see, you know, SPY and some of the buys and sells that it would have made. Um, so obviously it missed out on a lot of trades. We had some red trades there as well. Um, so an 84% return since inception, which uh, was uh, 1996. Okay, so let's put that into our Excel sheet here. So RSI did 84%. All right. And now buy and hold, did it do better or worse? Let's find out. And it did a lot better. 646% uh, return on investment. Uh, and that would have been $64,579.20 on a 10,000 initial, initial capital. So if we go to the, uh, oh, the chart's got to load here for a bit. I will put that in the Excel sheet while we late. Wait, sorry. 646%. All right. So yeah, I would have just bought and hold and obviously did a lot better. Okay. So return wise, buy and hold is going to do better uh, on average. Even in my last video, you guys saw that, but I, I like showing you, um, you know, comparing these strategies to buy and hold. And I'm, I'm not putting buy and hold on a pedestal. Um, there is lots of benefits to it. There's also tax benefits to it but the risk associated with buy and hold can be higher, right? If you're buy and holding a position for multiple years, there is a significant amount of time sometimes when it's in a drawdown, when it's red and you're just sitting there and holding uh, where another strategy might pick up the slack. So um, that's something to, to take into account as well, the risk associated with that. And a lot of these hedge funds, they'll actually reduce your risk um, in some markets because they have uncorrelated strategies. Okay, so Tesla's up next. So that was RSI SPY did 84% buy and hold spy did 646%. We got that in our Excel sheet. All right, next up, let's check Tesla. Here we go. RSI Tesla. What do we get? 817% since inception. Uh, 29,000. That's with um, uh, 10,000 starting capital. Um, I will put that in there. What was it? It was let's zoom that out. Oh, is this uh this is RSI Tesla. Okay, hold on. I'm going to rerun it. I don't know what's going on here. <clears throat> there we go. 817%. Let's see the buys and sells here. Okay, there we go. Perfect. Okay, so we have the RSI in the bottom. Buy at 30, sell at 70. All right, that looks good. Okay, so let's log that into our Excel sheet. 817%. 817%. Let's make these bigger so we can all see them. Uh, font size. Buy and hold. Sorry, I just got OCD here. Let's make these bigger too. Nice. Love it. Oh, sorry. I put that in the wrong cell. Okay, so RSI was 817% for Tesla. Let's compare it with buy and hold. Drum roll, please. 
Whoa, twenty thousand percent. Obviously, uh, that's crazy. Two point one million in profits if you bought and hold Tesla. Now, I believe, if I recall correctly, they did have a stock split. So these prices that you're going to see are going to look odd because when Tesla IPO, it wasn't trading at what is this first buy for? I can't even see it. Five dollars a share. It was probably higher than that, but with stock splits, um, you know, you have to account for that. So it would have bought 2,000 shares at $5 and yeah, 20,000% buy and hold. So once again, buy and hold outperforms a RSI strategy. I'm just gonna put 20,000%. I don't care about the actual number or the actual digits, but okay. Well, with these results, we can you know, pretty accurately predict Bitcoin that buy and hold is going to perform better as well. So let's see if our predictions are correct. RSI and Bitcoin did 191%. So let's put that in here. Make that bigger. And okay. And then buy and hold Bitcoin. What do we do? 671%. Okay, so there you have it. On average, buy and hold does better. Um, it makes sense. And, and let, let's let's talk about that. Let's explain why in this scenario, buy and hold does better than, um, than RSI. This RSI strategy is just, it's, it's, it's random. It's, it's a stupid strategy, right? Like there's, there's no, Obviously with these assets, there's no recurring pattern of when the RSI breaks above 30 and crosses below 70. There's, there's no, I mean, it, it was profitable for these strategies, but you know, it was more random, right? And randomly did well, right? Oh, on average, these assets go up over time. So um, the RSI strategy still works, but buying and holding is the best because you get rid of all the noise and you know, these assets are really good. You know, one of the best performing assets in the world, right? Spy, Tesla and Bitcoin have been you know, fantastic. So, um, you know, when you're comparing strategies to buy and hold, um, generally the strategies will not outperform it. Um, if you know, they are, they, they, they don't make any sense, right? So one example where a strategy would outperform buy and hold would be a commodity, for example, something like gold or oil, these assets trade sideways, they don't they, they, they may go up over time or for a period of time, a couple of years, but they always kind of come back to some median. And those strategies, when you have a long or short strategy or a combination of both, you can outperform buying and holding it. But when you're looking at SPY, the S&P 500, to outperform um, buying and holding is very, very hard and it's almost impossible. Um, the side benefit of creating strategies instead of buying and holding, you know, sometimes you want to do both is to reduce your risk. So for example, if spy dips 10% over a quarter over or a month, for example, and you're holding that, you're feeling that 10% drop, right? You're not selling it, you're still holding it in, in hopes that it, you know, it recovers. Um, but if you're able to develop a strategy that can profit off of that 10% or have a lower risk than that 10%, maybe it's a two or 3% loss in that month, then that investor um, has a lower risk, right? Um, and they're, you know, maybe stressed less or, or, you know, maybe, maybe their goal is to reduce their risk. So, you know, having a strategy that would go, you know, long or short um, on an asset like SPY, you might not outperform SPY for the year, but you might have a lower risk. And that's what the investor is looking for. Maybe you have a, a buy, uh, you know, a, a, a capital allocation to buy and hold, and then a capital allocation to uh, long and short. And one of them is to reduce risk and the other is to maximize return, right? So um, that's, that, that, that's an example where you might want to use a strategy to reduce your risk, but to outperform um, amazing assets like SPY, Tesla and Bitcoin, um, to, to actually outperform buy and hold is very difficult. You might be able to do it for a month or a year, but because they, on average, they always go up, um, you know, buying and holding will always be the best option. Um, sideways assets is when you can outperform with strategies like oil, gold, um, a lot of commodities um, you, you can outperform. And sometimes you can even outperform SPY uh, or the S&P if you trade commodities d depending on the market conditions. So anyways, um, 
Uh, that's the video, guys. Once again, buy and hold prevails. It does better than an RSI strategy. Um, I think for the next video where we compare a strategy, we'll do a very sophisticated strategy, not a stupid one with a, a stupid indicator, but actually solid results. Maybe one of the strategies that I use and we'll compare it with the buy and hold. Let me know in the comments if you like to see that. Um, I don't think it'll outperform, but it'll do a lot better and the risk will be a lot lower than buy and hold. So maybe that'll be my, my, my next video on this series of, of comparing to buy and hold, buy and holding an asset, um, a very sophisticated strategy that um, maybe outperforms it. So anyways, that's the video guys. Uh, buy and hold outperforms RSI. Hope you found value. If you did, leave a comment below and we'll see you next week for the next video. Peace out guys.